In this video, we're going to implement this view inventories use case. But before I do that, let me just take a little bit of time to explain to you why I think it's better to start with implementing the use case layer, right? So some people said to me that uh, this is still a layered architecture, not clean architecture. But I have to tell you that actually clean architecture is layered architecture. It's a type of layered architecture. And the only special part is that it has uh, the center, and the center is entities and then use cases. And the database is not in the center. Uh, the database is, is on the outside layer. Right? So that makes this clean architecture. And those two key things that I mentioned, use case driven and plugin based, those makes a, a layered architecture clean. Uh, so in this video, I want to explain to you why we want to start with use cases just a little bit. Because business logic is the purpose of this type of business applications, right? We're writing the application to implement the business logic. That's why we want to start with the purpose and end with the purpose, right? Because creating the application is not the purpose. Using a particular technology is not the purpose. But implementing the business logic is the purpose. And also because the use cases layer implements business logic. That's why we want to start with use case. The second reason is that when we implement use cases, right, these use cases makes our uh, developer focused on the business logic instead of you know, user interface or, or database. So it's not UI centric, it's not DB centric, but use case centric. And because our use case layer is not technology dependent, therefore, you can use the use case layer in any type of applications, whether it's mobile applications or desktop applications or web applications. Uh, you can use the use case layer. Uh, in some cases, like a mobile application, you may want to use web APIs to wrap around the use case layer to expose the functionality outside, right? In other applications, like uh, Blazor server applications, you may want to skip that web API layer. Like in our project, we are going to skip the web API layer. But if you want to write a uh, Blazor WebAssembly application, then you will have to wrap the use case layer with a web API in order to expose the functionalities outside from the use case layer. And that's what the, the gateways present presenters and controllers are. And therefore, in our case, in this video, we are going to start with implementing the use cases. So we're going to start implementing this first use case, which is the view inventories, right? So we are going to go to our Visual Studio and we are going to create another project, right? I want to have a class library that is separate from the web application for the purpose of making it independent from technologies. I don't want to put the logic inside the Blazor application because it can be used in other applications. So let's search class libraries and languages C sharp. Right, so go next. Here you can see that this, the, the structure is like this. Right, so we are going to make sure the project is correct. So IMS uh, inventory management system dot use cases and the framework is .NET 6 and hitting on the create button. So let's take a look at the structure, the folder structure. We want to make sure it's all correct, right? So we have the solution file here. We have web application here, uh, which is the folder and the project file is inside, right? And use cases also has a project file inside. So this is a perfect structure. So we're okay with that. Now, we know that we are going to have a lot of use cases, right? For this particular use case, it's view inventories. So how do we organize the use cases? Uh, we can organize them by screens, right? Because one particular screen may have many use cases. For example, the screen that I showed you for the view inventories, it not only have view inventories, but later it will have added inventory, it will have add inventories, right? You may want to group them by screens, or you may want to group them together by a concept, 
So let's, in this case, just group them together by a concept, right? Well, there's many other ways to group, group them as long as uh, it all makes sense. I have other courses that I group them by screens. I think it's a, it's a good way as well. So inventories, um, the reason why I'm not so consistent about these groupings is that I want to show that it's, there's a flexibility, you know, according to your uh, style and your uh, project. I'm going to delete this class 1.cs and I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this view inventor race use case. I'm going to change this to public because I'm going to use this class in a different project. And here, if we look at the use case that we have written, uh, to implement this use case, we will need to be able to supply uh, the search conditions, which basically uh, we're searching by name, providing a few letters uh, of the inventory name, which I should have specified more clearly here, right? So the user enters a few letters in the search box. This part is the part of the inventory name. Uh, and then uh, what it returns is supposed to be a list of inventories so that we can provide that list of inventories to the UI and let the UI display it. And now we can come back and continue with the use case. And first of all, I want to change the, the use case name to uh, view inventories by name. Uh, I think that's what it really is, right, by name. Uh, and then we can continue with the use case. I like to name my method as execute, right? And the method will return a list of inventories, right? So I'm going to call it execute async. I'm going to use async way to do it. And uh, the parameter is going to be name. And there's a default value, which is empty. Here, because I want to use async method, so I need to use task to wrap this around. And the reason why I use uh, want to use async method, I'm going to cover that later um, because I don't want to cover everything at the beginning. So there's just too much at the beginning to start with. Uh, I want to ease into this uh, process a little bit. So now I don't have an inventory, right? So this is a way of doing development uh, similar to test-driven development where you just start writing and you correct those uh, squiggly lines, right? Uh, now I see a squiggly line. I know that I don't have inventory, so I need to create an inventory. So where does the inventory stand, right? It stays in the, uh, in this, the center of the center in the, in the clean architecture rings, right? So it's in the center, which is the entities. So it should be this entities in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another project just so that we can have very clear separation of concerns. So I'm going to select class library, go to this, and here uh, I'm going to call it IMS.coreBusiness. So I don't want to call it entity because entity sounds more related to a database terminology. So I don't want to use a technology term. I want to use a business term. So that's why I call it core business to refer to the center of the center in the clean architecture. So clicking on the next to create this class library and I'm going to hit the F2 button to name this class inventory, changing the name to inventory. So what are we having inside the inventory? We don't have to consider right now because again, similar to TDD, you want to do minimum work to get rid of the squiggly lines. So here we just need to add a reference to the core business project. And then come over here, we need to do control dot to import namespace. Now we don't see the squiggly line anymore. So what do we do here? In any use case method, we have business logic inside, right? So imagine here we're going to retrieve data from database, which contains a list of inventories. And then we need to do something with that inventory. We can do it here. But because in this particular case, we don't have anything to do once we get the inventories. So it's going to be a simple pass 
through. So the, all we need to do is to get the data. Then how do we get the data? Remember that in clean architecture, data is outside, right? So we cannot be dependent on the data layer or the repository layer. Therefore, we need to use interface as an abstraction of the data store so that our use case can work with the abstraction. And then later, we can implement this interface as a plugin to plug into this use case. Therefore, our use case is not dependent on the plugin. Our use case is dependent on this abstraction. And this is one of the key concepts of clean architecture. And I'm going to use interface before creating the interface. Though, again, this is very similar to test-driven development. You just write the test case without even having any definitions or declarations. This may feel a little bit weird, but if you bear with me, you will know what I really mean. So first of all, I will have a constructor here. And then I'm going to use this imagined interface, which I'm going to call it I inventory repository. Right? I'm just imagining that I have it already. And then I'm going to do control dot. Right? And I'm going to uh, initialize this. Now I have this inventory, and then I can use it. So like I said, this is going to be a simple pass through and this is going to be called, uh, let's call it get inventories by name. And we can just simply pass this through and we're going to return. This is going to be an async method. So I'm going to add async at the end. Like I said, I'm going to explain why we need to use async a little bit later. So now we see that we need to define this inventory repository. And like I said before, the uh, in, the interfaces should be sitting inside use cases. Only by doing that, we can plug the I.O. related codes like database or file systems uh, from outside into our use case layer so that we can have a core that's not dependent on any external things. That's why I'm going to come over here and create a folder knowing that I'm going to have many interfaces for plugins. So I'm going to create a folder and then I'm going to create an interface inside it. Okay. I'm going to call it I inventory repository and the method here is I inventory control dot to import the namespace. It's called get inventories by name and then it takes the name. Okay, so this is the interface. So when we come over here, we see that it's still there's still squeaky lines. We just need to do a control dot to import the namespace. Now everything is fine, except that this it's complaining that it doesn't have this uh, method in the interface. So we might have forget the async. Yes, we forgot the async. What we have done so far is that we created the use case and we created one of the interface that we need to use uh, for the use case. The use case is dependent on the interface and we have a complete core in the clean architecture. The next step is to implement the interface in data store layer as a plugin to plug into the use case. The plugin will need to implement this interface and then we can use dependency injection to inject the plugin into the use case, which I will show you in the next video.